the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 127, discover neurotechnology's role in mental health and healing with expert Jackie Dernan. Um, and I know that for me to address the sexual abuse, it was um, when I realized what it was when I was older, it definitely wasn't something that I was going to talk about at home or in my home country because shame came up so much. Mm. It was like, oh, my God, what would people say? What would people think of me? And I there was no way. So for me, it was like you say if you, if you could do it again, you'd go to a retreat. I went to Australia. <laughs> So I went as far away from Ireland as I possibly could because I knew for me to heal, I needed to get away so that I could actually talk about it because over there, and even now when I speak to family members, it's very hard to access mental health over there. Whereas here you can go to your doctor and get a mental health plan. Um, so I knew moving away was something that I needed to do to start talking about it and also to start. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope, a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share their story that resonates at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and unwavering strength that lies within each and every one of us. So settle in and take a deep breath and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring narrative, just a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, considering supporting us by subscribing, sharing and leaving a review, your engagement helps us reach the hearts and spread the message of healing with love. I'm so excited today. We have Jackie Dernan with us. Now, Jackie is a visionary founder of the Hinterland Health Retreat a world-class rehabilitation facility that combines revolutionary neurotechnology, which we're going to dive in and find out about, with leading holistic therapies to offer a truly personalized and transformative experience. Her story is one of profound resilience and transformation. And after enduring trauma and sexual abuse, she has embarked on a journey that will to find the effective ways to manage stress, anxiety, and PTSD. This quest led her to become an EFT practitioner, so tapping practitioner, and a counsellor with over 15 years' experience working with both national and international Australian and international rehabilitation centres, health retreats, and private practice. Driven by her passion for helping others to truly thrive. Welcome. Hello, Jackie. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's such a privilege and a pleasure. And wow, thank you so much for holding the space and being so vulnerable to have this conversation about your own healing journey and the outcome, which is this beautiful hinterland retreat. So are you okay to have a little bit more of a conversation about your story, your journey? Sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, like we have so many different varying degrees of abuse, yeah, and for the lot, for many of us, myself included, some of it goes unspoken about, and we we hide it different ways. 
And in some cases, we don't even talk about it at all. Now, it's my understanding, Jackie, because we were talking before the show, that you've only just recently decided to come out and let people know the truth of it. Is that right? Yeah, so I've been in practice. I talk to my clients about it, but it's probably not something I have spoken to some friends, but it's not something I'm talking about, you know, every day or if people are close to me, they are aware of it. But I felt um, part of this journey of launching this um, retreat space was really about talking about why it's even come to being and why it's come to being is my own private and personal healing journey I've been on for many, many years and all of the modalities I've experienced, all the things that have helped me. And I really wanted to create a safe space for people to come to where we could combine all of these amazing therapies. And if there's any way that I can help fast track it, um, I really wanted to try and do it um, whatever we could in a 28 day period and get as much healing done in that time. Mm. Uh, look, I, lo I love the concept of being able to run away and get better. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I also love the fact that you are now standing in your power and sharing the story that you're not here by accident, that you've had your own journey and that you've got lived experience, plus you've also got um, all of these credentials to bring uh, not just the heart and compassion, but also the know-how to take us on this healing journey. So that you mentioned that there's several other modalities that you use. So tapping, I love tapping. I'm a huge fan of tapping. And uh, what were some of the other modalities that you love and, and or use at the Hinterland Retreat? Um. Uh, we well, we'll have kind of traditional therapies like your psychotherapies or counseling. Um, we'll have acupuncture, which is something that I've personally experienced quite a lot while I was going through my IVF journey. Um, hypnotherapy, um, kahuna massage, which is kind of a mind body spirit massage, which is fabulous. Um, we have um naturopathy we have somatic healing we have body talk trauma release exercises we have um we really have divided it into kind of mind body spirit so there's lots of uh, different modalities that fall under all of those those three areas so this is quite a collective of people obviously that has yes. a variety of different uh specialities that bring this to the table so now you said 28 days so yes. is how long someone books into the retreat yeah the idea being um well they say it's 30 days to make a habit right um but also some of the technology that we've brought over from the us they need to be on that daily for up to 21 days so um and in some case it might be even slightly longer than 25 28 days so we want to make sure that they they use the technology as much as is required because our goal is to never see the clients again i really don't want a revolving door policy what i want to do is reconnect people to their light and to their power um, give them tools give them a comprehensive aftercare program and help uh, remove all old belief systems and patterns and help them generate new neural pathways so that they can go out and ride the waves of life in a more resilient manner and um yeah that we ultimately hopefully touch wood don't ever have to see them again i love that that could be the tagline we'll yes, never see, see you, you again, again. <laughs> <laughs> i love that i love that i love that now as a recovered alcoholic myself for more than 30 years and i've been sober now just over nine years I know how challenging it is to do this by yourself. And, and I have to say how dangerous it is to do it by yourself. And I'm often asked in interviews, if you had to do it again, would you do it differently? And I'd say, yes, I would go to a retreat. I would go to a location where specialists knew what they were talking about and could guide me through the process because it is uncomfortable. And, um, and so I love that, that you offer this and that the retreat is 28 days. So there must have been quite a journey from your personal experience and, you know, your awakening that you needed to have some changes in your life. And then did you have your own personal addiction challenges as well? Um, I didn't. Well, I say I wouldn't say I was addicted to alcohol, 
I think when I got into alcohol in my teen years, alcohol was something like the Irish do really well with alcohol, right? So I I did really well with alcohol in my teen and early 20s. But what became really apparent when I was out is um, if I got to a certain level of drunkenness, I was the sad drunk because I had a lot of trauma inside me. But as an 18 or a girl in my early 20s, I didn't connect those dots then. I just thought, oh, I was crying because, you know, the boy didn't notice me or whatever it was. I had a story, but in hindsight, it was obvious that there was just quite a lot of trauma that had built up. And, you know, the truth comes out when you have alcohol in your system. Mm. So um, I find now that I drink alcohol but I don't drink that much I would have the odd glass of alcohol but no there were not really addiction issues for me I was more of an avoidant I'd say in um Mm. I just tried to avoid emotionally what was going on but I think it took me a while to connect the dots and actually recognize that when I was being triggered in my present life it was because of trauma in my past Mm. um so much in that <laughs> where to start uh so what look I, look just let's just talk about irish for a second because i'm irish you're irish is that i look we do funerals completely different than the rest of the world everyone gets drunk it's like a party yeah. it's not a funeral and yeah. um, that sort of gives you an indication for those of you who aren't irish as to how much alcohol is part of the culture it's just inculcated yeah. on a cellular level Um, How much of the experience that you went through do you think is family patterns repeating? Do you feel that this is this was all yours to bear this time around? Or do you feel that you're unpacking in your healing journey some of the family patterns? Um, I would say it's probably a combination, but I think also um, Ireland as a country. So I think as a uh, um, as my country of origin, if I think about it, There is a lot of stuff coming to the surface now about abuse, you know, whether it's the abuse in the church or abuse in the Magdalene laundries. You just there was a lot of stuff. We lived in a a culture of the Irish don't speak about things a lot that we don't speak about our emotions. We don't speak about things that we see that we think aren't right. It's just very much. Let's just not talk about that. So I feel for me, this is very much about almost uh, it's not just family. It feels like a, a change in my uh, the people from my country. Do you know what I mean? Because I think a lot of people are waking up and they don't want to do that anymore. They want to have open conversations. They want to have those uncomfortable conversations. They want to not be ashamed, not be afraid of judgment Uh, But I think that's an era that maybe my parents and my grandparents lived in. You know, you didn't you didn't want people to hear something about your family or. um, And I know that for me to address the sexual abuse, it was um, when I realized what it was when I was older. It definitely wasn't something that I was going to talk about at home or in my home country because shame came up so much. Mm. It was like, oh, my God, what would people say? What would people think of me? And I, there was no way. So for me, it was like you say, you if you could do it again, you'd go to a retreat. I went to Australia. <laughs> so I went as far away from Ireland as I possibly could because I knew for me to heal, I needed to get away so that I could actually talk about it because over there, and even now when I speak to family members, it's very hard to access mental health over there. Whereas here you can go to your doctor and get a mental health plan. Um, so I knew moving away was something that I needed to do to start talking about it and also to start healing. And then my visits back are my way to test if there's any triggers remaining, if there's anything else that I need to look into. Uh, I love it. I love it. My tests are when I catch up with my family. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I love them dearly. Yes. And if there's any triggers, that's when it's going to come up. I love this. So um, one a member of my family, was so my grandpa and my grandma, one was Protestant, one was Catholic. So they had to get out of town pretty quickly. And mm-hmm. so that's when they came to Australia. So, yeah. And uh, it, whether it's, you know, first generation, second generation, these 
patterns of behavior, they're in, they're they're in us and they're in our behaviors and they're in what we see in the environment that we grow up. And this not speaking about things is not just, it's not just from Ireland. It, it's, it, it's an epidemic around the world is not having the conversation. So how bravely you are to stand up and say, this is what's happened to me. And now I've gone through a healing process and now I offer this healing to others. So mm -hmm. wh wow, this is really shifting the, the frequency of the planet by having these conversations. I love this. So now what is, I have to ask you, what is your favorite modality? Is it EFT? Is it tapping? I have a very strong soft spot for tapping purely because the experience I had with it. When I first heard about it, my friend said, did you hear about this modality? You tap on your face. It's great for depression, anxiety, addiction, physical pain. And I thought, what a crock as if. And then I went on a weekend workshop and I felt so different. And then in an effort to fix me because I felt so broken, I decided to become a practitioner with zero intention of being, you know, I didn't want to do it on anybody else. I just wanted to know what a practitioner knew because clearly I would need that level of training to heal me. But through that process, as I worked with others, I started just seeing the light come back on in people's eyes. I saw them reconnecting to, to their true power to themselves. And that's such a beautiful thing to witness as a practitioner and on some level can be quite addictive. And I... So I would have a very uh, strong soft spot for that. I also do love kahuna massage. I had some beautiful, almost spiritual experiences um, in kahuna massage. And, you know, where I would just feel the need to cry or laugh or scream because certain at the, at that energy was in my body. Um, but yeah, there's so many beautiful modalities and, I just say to people, um, be curious. And, you know, even if it sounds wishy-washy or completely out there, um, just go and have an experience. I was talking to someone and they said, oh, I went to this thing and they put crystals on me. And I was like, what the? But it's not about the, um, it's more about how do you feel at the end? Like, even if they put crystals on the top of your head, at the end of the day, if you feel significantly different, and you feel a shift, that is the most important thing. Absolutely. It's the shift. I love it. I equally became a holistic psychologist because I felt, mm, I need a lot of help. <laughs> Best I fix it myself. And, uh, yeah, I lasted probably six months as a therapist realising, hmm, I'm actually not cut out for this. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. to be in the proximity of other wellness practitioners. I love the way that they think. I love their empathy, their sympathy and their compassion and their ability to hold the space for others so that they can actually evolve. I just love, love, love it. And that's why I love working with them. So, yeah. so I love tapping because it's something that you can do anywhere, anyhow. And even if it looks a little strange, you can do it in public. And uh, so anxiety was one of my big issues. So I could tap in public. And even if people thought, oh, my God, what is that woman doing? They think less of it now. But it really is something that you can do anywhere. And once you sort of have a fairly good idea about it, you can. It, it's a great modality that you can use yourself. So I, I love something that's so accessible to everybody. That's what I love too. So I can train someone in a session how they can use it on themselves and give them a personalized script so that they're empowered um, to do this. So I uh, I just think it's it's so powerful because to me, it's about having tools that you can use on yourself in that moment because I'm you're not going to be there. I'm not going to be there all the time for the client. So you need them, you know, to... Sorry, I think my son's coming in. Are you on the podcast? Yes. Could you please go out? Thank you. Sure. <laughs> That's okay. We're not going to talk about anything the kids can't listen to. But it, um, and look, that look, this is we're keeping it real here at Going <laughs> Through Love. Uh, it's it is a journey, and it's a journey that starts with self and um and having that being brave to realize that things aren't okay and to take the steps in the right direction and to seek help. Like we're all about raising the level of awareness that we, this is nothing. None of these journeys is something that we can do by ourselves. We need to reach out to others and, um, and to help us move forward. 
And I love the fact that you also talk about PTSD because as a survivor, it, it it's real and you think that you've managed it, but you've only just taken off one layer of the onion and then something else comes up and it raises its head again. So, and I love the fact that you offer this 28-day program because it's something that you need to get to the bottom of. You need to take all the layers apart, have a close look at it, and then restructure so that you can move forward more powerfully. I love that. Yeah. Uh, now, I, think, I just think from a PTSD perspective, I had in my early 20s experiences of going to the doctor for pap smears and um, them not being aware that I was sexually abused. And it was just so traumatic to have a pap smear with a doctor and their bedside manner would be they just wanted this done and dusted. And they would be calling me difficult or whatever. And um, yeah, it was, yeah, that was very interesting experience. And I, I just had to go to therapy basically to work through that and get, be okay with having procedures and, you know, it not be triggering me back to my childhood mm. and my trauma. Absolutely. So I, what I love seeing is that there's so much more trauma informed and that it's now a conversation that we're having and now we're talking in any way, shape or form where you could be triggered that they have some level of understanding about what's happening so that they can point you in the right direction. Even if they can't fix it themselves, they can at least point you in the right direction. Even if it's handing you a pamphlet or backing off and seeing that there's another way to get the job done. I love it. Now I've got to ask, why the hinterland? Why the hinterland? Well, um, I, I'm from the Sunshine Coast and there's some beautiful hinterland up here. But when we were looking for a retreat, we visited many, many properties and we kept getting drawn into the Sunshine Coast hinterland. And I do personally believe that this property actually chose us. It feels like the moment you step on the land, the land feels incredibly healing. Uh, so I feel that also plays a part um, when people come here, it's not just about the modalities, it's then reconnecting to the land, reconnecting with nature. And that in itself is going to have huge healing benefits for people who come to the retreat. Yep, absolutely. I, I, I feel the same way in Adelaide here, my, my local town. We have a property that has been physically tuned to the frequency of human healing. So yeah. just being on the property, the they can measure it too. So just being on the property can shift your frequency into that space of healing. So yeah, I yeah, absolutely positively. And most places that have this frequency um are attuned to it already. Like there's a reason where the ley lines are, where the energy fields are, all of this stuff. And an energy ecologist can actually measure it and just give you some ideas about how you can actually increase that and contain it basically. Oh, wow. Um it's absolutely fascinating. I believe a hundred percent in frequency. And when we ra rise our frequency, when I raise our frequency, it lifts us up to a different level where we can heal at the speed of love. Absolutely. I love it. This is fascinating. So now how long has the Hinterland Retreat been going for? Well, it's, we're opening the doors the end of November. So it's um, getting to the exciting days of the countdown until we're open. At the moment, you can go online. We have a wait list. So you can sign up to the wait list. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to opening the doors. It'll only be six people at a time that go through because we really want to tailor it around the individual that's there. And like I said, put everything we possibly can into their 28 day program I to ensure it. their success. I and love that. We have a great machine coming from the US that has a lot of frequencies in it, actually. And um, very helpful with depression, anxiety, addictions. They have some great case studies coming out of the US. Um, unfortunately for us at the moment, the, these technologies are not available outside of the US. So I, I'm really excited that we're able to bring them to Australia and this combination is not available anywhere in the world. So it's very, very exciting. I love it. And the links are in the show notes and also in the show description so that you can lean in and have a closer look. Now, I suppose my question is, what about the rest of us that just want a little holiday? Can we come for that? <laughs> not, not at this stage. We're not doing any mini breaks, but who knows? Like the way I look at it is technology is going to be advancing. Right now you need to be on these technologies for 21 days minimum 
who knows what like next year or even the year after. We've seen how iPhones have changed quite dramatically and quite quickly over the years. And I just see this technology is going to evolve and it'll be just really interesting to watch this space. Um, having personally experienced all of these technologies, um, it's amazing how you feel when you come off. I wanted things where you noticed a shift in your system. And we have this amazing meditation chair that 10 minutes in that chair is the equivalent to you meditating for a year. Oh. So it forces you into a very deep theta state. And they're working with Ukrainian soldiers um, on the front line, traumatized kids in the Ukraine. They've set up a little center with these chairs and they're just seeing such amazing results. So I'm just so excited about being able to offer that to people that will help take their them out of fight or flight and get their system into a relaxed state mm -hmm. so that we can actually start doing the work. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have probably been in that fight or flight for maybe all their life mm -hmm. um, or even a, a large portion of their life. So to be able to use technology to help us get them out of that fight or flight mode and into a more relaxed their nervous system. And then we can get in there and do the work and mm -hmm. really help people transform. I love this. So the so who is your avatar? Who is your perfect audience? Who are you marketing this uh, hinterland retreat to? Um, I think we're marketing to anybody who, um, it's like anyone who's depressed, anxious, addicted, uh, anybody who wants a health reset. So you, you may have health issues and you want to come where we'll be giving you IVs, uh, beautiful organic food that may, is suited to your genetic makeup mind Barrett, body spirit sessions um yeah it's basically anybody who's seeking a change they want to do things differently mm -hmm. they don't want to do that way of being anymore they want to do something new i love it and, and if you get a smaller retreat that's not quite 28 days i'm in i love yeah. it i love it i love <laughs> it i'll find a reason to be there <laughs> yeah it sounds well, absolutely delicious yeah, well, we're looking at doing 14 days also, but 28 days, we want to just make sure that people are getting, like I say, they're getting what they need and that they don't have to come back. Wow, oh, I love it. This has been amazing. I've got so many more questions to ask you, and I'm sure our audience do too. So follow the links in the show notes and in the show description and reach out to Jackie and have a beautiful conversation. If you're listening today and you are a survivor of family and or domestic violence, then have a look on our website, Healing Through Love. We hold pamper days, which looks like day spa on steroids, where you can have a facial, your hair done, your makeup done. You can have your bars done, chakra aligning, all of those things. Uh, all free uh, for you in your local area. We have them locally here in Adelaide, also in New South Wales. And we're, it's, I'm so excited to say that now Healing Through Love has gone global. So we have these beautiful pamper days located all over the world. So contact us with Healing Through Love. We'll point you in the right direction. If you're listening today and you're a practitioner, Please reach out to us if you've got a heart for change and if you'd like to hold the frequency for others to heal. We're looking for practitioners in your local area for these beautiful pamper days as well. Wow, it's so great to have a chat with you, Jackie. I'm looking forward to myself booking in. Hopefully you'll get it down to 14 days by 2025. Uh, I can sneak out of the office for two weeks, I'm sure. No one will even notice I'm gone. Uh, in Just in closing, Jackie, what are your words of wisdom to share with our audience today? I think um, my words of wisdom would be to um, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to someone. And um, if you're, your first experience with a practitioner is not good, that does not mean that um, you should give up. You will keep going. Find someone that you suits you and someone that you can uh, talk to because um it's so worth the reward. Like it's so worth lightening that load and um, processing that trauma. You'll feel 10 times better for it. Um, so yeah, reach out, talk. It's not as scary as you think it's going to be. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Jackie, for gracing us with your presence and enlightening us on this beautiful opportunity at the Hinterland Retreat. It's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Jackie. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.com.
www.thepowerofpower.org. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.